Well, I think the interesting thing about our approach is that um, we're very flexible um, so that you can um, you can use our client with your existing email address, with your Gmail address, with your Yahoo address, with your existing IMAP server, or you can use our complete service with a privacy oriented mailbox that encrypts everything, all of your messages in the cloud. And that's what we're currently raising funds for in Indiegogo. In uh, this episode of uh, Yellowhead Technology Podcast, I was speaking with Olivier Gaek from wideout.io. And this is our conversation. Hi, Olivier. How are you? Fine. I'm fine. How are you? Great. Mm, the subject of uh, this uh, episode will be Whiteout, uh, email encryption service you help to develop. Yep. In front of me, I have your Indiegogo campaign yep. with the title Whiteout Email Privacy Open Source End to End. Um, so let's speak uh, one by one about this. What do you mean by email privacy? Well, the the idea is to make sure that, that your emails are protected. Um, you know, if you think about the information that we put out into the cloud and, and onto our mobile devices, um, we put more and more information out there where it's uh, uniquely accessible, which is what we want, uniquely accessible to us. But we also don't want it to be accessible to people who, who don't have any business um, in getting to our information. And, and that may be when we lose it, that may be um, that may be uh, surveillance, that may be economical spies, that may just be break-ins. So, so people um, want the benefits of cloud and mobile and, and ubiquitous information accessibility, but they also want the protection. And uh, my, my personal feeling on, on the state of the industry is that we've, we've given people great uh, functionality um, in terms of cloud and mobile. Um, but we've given them miserable protection. So it's like in the car industry where we make very fast cars, but we don't give them airbags at this time. We don't give them um, seat belts. We don't give keys them... keys from that car. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So all the doors are open as it, as it, as it were. Um, so so now we just as as an industry, um, as as an information technology industry, um, we believe that that we just need to add a whole level of protection to to cloud and mobile. And uh, uh, we're starting with email because it, it, it turns out that email is probably the most important, the most ubiquitous, and the most personal store of information that you have. I'm not sure if you are familiar with uh, Lavabit. If you are familiar with Lavabit, uh, I, I don't know, Scandal. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. So, so Lavabit, of course, um, a, a privacy-focused email service using encryption to protect emails, using, and I think that was the problem, um, server-side encryption. Uh, where you still have to trust the provider of the of of the service, um, and, and and that's kind of the the, the one big caveat um, about um, you know who do you trust, and um, after the lava bit um, shut down after the Snowden revelations, um, the I think the clear consensus in the among the security experts is that you need end-to-end -end encryption, which which means that the encryption happens on your device and that everything that travels across the wire into the cloud is in, is in fact encrypted um, before it hits the wire. And so you don't necessarily have to trust the cloud provider. That's the important thing. As long as you have some way to, 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 to confirm that you have strong cryptography on your client machine, um, your desktop or your mobile, then, then you don't have to trust the cloud provider anymore. And so end-to-end -end encryption really becomes the quality that, that, that people are asking for. Yes, that's the third point of your Indiegogo campaign title. So end-to-end -end mean that's the difference between Lavabit and uh, Whiteout, that Lavabit has uh, uh, keys on their own servers. Exactly, exactly. Um, there's always a trade-off in, in security between convenience and security and you always have to have to choose where you make the trade-off the, the most extreme security is not to use any computers and and uh, there are certain people for whom that that might be a very good idea on on the other end of the spectrum you just have people who, who don't have anything who believe they have nothing to protect um, and who don't care about security at all and, and the value convenience above everything else. So you have to make a trade-off. And, and with, the, with the Lava Bit model, where you just had a webmail interface um, and, 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 and you just used a website and the application ran on the server, 
Um, you know, that's replicating the delivery model of, of Gmail or Yahoo Mail, and, and that's certainly very convenient, but it doesn't give you the security that you want. The, the provider of the webmail um, can, in fact, compromise um, your, your, your account, and, and, that's not, not, and, and you want to exclude that possibility. So then you have to move the security versus convenience trade-off one more notch towards security, and that means end-to-end -end encryption. I also like how you compare unencrypted email with a postcard. A lot of people can see what's inside the message. It's because you in fact hand it over to, to other people. Um, you hand it over to other servers to transmit across a variety of, of connections. In the, in the olden days when email um, was starting out, um, it, the, the, the message may have traveled across four, five, six, seven different servers. Um, today the servers connect directly, but but you don't really know who they connect to and how they connect. Um, and, and again, in the Snowden <clears throat> revelations, we learned that in fact, the well-known mail servers are, are very much targets for surveillance because everything shows up there. This uh, weakness or feature uh, that everything shows up in a regular email, when they was creating the protocol, they knew about this. Protocol was uh, designed this way. Well, exactly. I mean, it's it's you, you have the you have the conflicting requirements of being able to connect easily, being able to connect to a variety of systems that come from different manufacturers. So it has to be kind of an open protocol. But at the same time, um, you know, now that people are using that technology, they become concerned about um, a, a level of protection that makes sure that they stay in control of their of their information. Whoever sits on uh, on the lines, the optical lines, can uh, see what's uh, what's transferred or around these uh, lines. Yeah, exactly, and and that gives, you know, that that gives the opportunity for very very comprehensive surveillance and and just capturing everything, and and that is something that that a lot of people today are not comfortable with. Especially in Germany, especially in Germany. Well, uh, that, that, that's an ac excellent point. I, I think it's not an accident that, uh, uh, you know, what's, what's really surprising is that, uh, you know, we, we, we use the PGP standard, um, which uh, is, has been around for 20 years, invented by, by, by Americans. Um, but most of the if implementations available today um, are, are, are being maintained and developed by, by Germans. Um, so that, that's kind of an interesting anecdote. Another point of uh, your uh, Indiegogo campaign is uh, open source. So your uh, entire entire solution will be open source. Yes, it's published, um, and, and and that's really also part of of our reaction and 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 the general reaction to, towards the Edward Snowden. You know, I I I've been working in the in the security software industry for a long time, and it, it's it's very obvious to me that that with uh, um, with the insights um, of that, that Edward Snowden uh, revealed, the, the the laws have changed. Um, in in the past, um, it was it was an option to make a little bit of a security improvement um, as long as people used that security. Um, and and but but today you really have to deliver trusted security, trusted algorithms. You cannot invent any new algorithms. And also, you have to open source your technology so that independent people, the, the, the very the very small number of people that, that we all still trust, can take a look at your solution and pass judgment. What's, what's your technical or career background? Well, I myself come from a software development background. Um, I've been in the uh, software industry now for over 25 years. And my co-founders, who are much younger than I am, come from a computer science background um, with a strong specialization in browser-based security. Who is in a team? Co-founder Tankred Hase, um, uh, Felix Hamel, um, both here from Munich, and Andres Reimann from Estonia. Why did you choose Indiegogo and not Kickstarter? Uh, we chose Indiegogo because um, they have a, a longer track history here in Europe. They've been here, I think, for over two years. Um, Kickstarter just came online in, in, in Germany this month, so we were more more familiar with Indiegogo, and also their campaign structures are different. Um, on Kickstarter, I, I have to um, make the funding threshold, otherwise I have to give the money back, and that wasn't really appropriate for us because we are already financed 
Um, so we're just using Indiegogo and the campaign um, to generate an early community of supporters and 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 happy users and a little bit of a, a financing contribution, but it wasn't the main goal. So Indiegogo's more flexible campaign structure seemed more appropriate. What else we should mention about Whiteout.io? Well, I think the interesting thing about our approach is that um, we're very flexible. Um, so that you can um, you can use our client with your existing email address, with your Gmail address, with your Yahoo address, with your existing IMAP server, or you can use our complete service with a privacy-oriented mailbox that encrypts everything, all of your messages, in the cloud, and that's what we're currently raising funds for in Indiegogo. So so we're very excited about the feedback that we're getting, also from people um, sending sending us support. Thirty-three days left. 53 people uh, supported you in 13 days, so uh, send some money to yes. uh, wide out. <laughs> yes, please. That'd be great. What is your so- presence on social networks? Um, so we're on Twitter at wideout.io. We're on Facebook um, and uh, GitHub, of course, um, where we interact with the developer community and where we publish our source code. That was uh, Olivier Gayek from Wideout. Thank you for your time. And thank you very much. And this was sixth episode of Yellowhead Technology Podcast. My name is Yasan.net. Follow me on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, uh, SoundCloud, LinkedIn. Download, listen, share.